Hello, uh, my name is Grant Yocum. I'll be your instructor for Introduction to Ethics Online, Phil 103, Section 9, CRN 44708. Hope that's right. College of Arts and Sciences, Department of Philosophy, Fall 2016. Um, so the purpose of today's video is to go over the syllabus. So I've printed a copy, but since it's an online course, I expect I may be the only one who prints a copy. Um, it is posted to Moodle for your reference. Uh, print as many as you like, it doesn't matter. Um, it, so today I'm going to go over the uh, course syllabus, but um, first I'm going to introduce myself. Um, I've been teaching at Oakland University since winter 20, er, uh, 2005. Um, so it's uh, been here quite a long time. Um, it's, I've been teaching that this was actually the first course I taught for Oakland University and um, I've been pretty well teaching this course every semester since then. Uh, I've had a lot of time to develop it. Um, I'm also from Canada, so I'm a frequent commuter, which makes online courses a little bit easier for me to um, manage uh, because my drive to work involves a discussion with the Department of Homeland Security. Um, I do have on-campus office hours this way, I'm, or this semester. Um, I'm teaching uh, three courses on campus in addition to this, which makes this a very busy semester. So, um, I'm also finishing off a PhD um, at Brock University. I've got my master's in philosophy from Brock University as well, and two undergraduate degrees, one in English um, with a focus on lit theory and um, an honors in philosophy there. Um, my own work actually pertains to sort of social theory and um, sort of a modern continental political theory that relates to it. So, um, but it's I've been I've written sort of extensively on ethics as well. Um, so the first thing you'll find on the syllabus is my name and my email address. Um, please do email me if you have any questions whatsoever. Um, also, my office hours on campus are Tuesdays and Thursdays from 12 till 1245 and by appointment. Um, you may hear some background noise. Um, that is because I am on baby duty. I have twin girls um, who take up a lot of my time and attention. Uh, but I'm here to uh, give you as much of my time and attention as is uh, humanly possible given the need for sleep. Um, so, uh, this course is going to meet virtually, um, which means that uh, Moodle is your main way to uh, access course resources. Uh, this uh, welcome video I've emailed to each of you um, along with a copy of the syllabus, um, but you should get your user ID and your password, log into Moodle, and um, check for frequent updates. Um, the course schedule will tell you when um, new materials will be posted for you and assignments and that sort of thing. So Moodle is the hot ticket. Um, most of the lectures for this course will be YouTube format. Um, some are older, uh, where I have things put just the way I want them, uh, and some I've reformulated. I'll probably redo a couple this semester for you as well. I do that just to keep the course a little bit fresh. Um, it's sometimes I just supplement the existing ones, so you'll see an old hairstyle mixed with a new hairstyle, that sort of thing. Um, resolution from my old computer versus the better resolution from the one that I'm using now. Um, so uh, it's a uh, there's going to be a lot of video material and actually quite a lot of reading in this course as well. Um, in addition to that, um, you can see from the first page of the syllabus, um, there's a course catalog description which tells us that largely this is supposed to help you develop um, your written facility with um, critical investigations, your ability to use words to talk about um, theory, um, critical thinking abilities, um, and the ability to uh, read and analyze. So um, my tests, uh, they line up with those requirements. Um, it's going to, I'm going to ask you to write a little bit in this course and I'm going to, it's, you've probably already seen the pile of textbooks I've had you um, purchase. These are all required. I've tried to keep them as cheap as possible. Um, we're not going all the way through a single one of these. 
But nonetheless, there will be um, quite a bit of reading uh, in this course as well. Um, so this is a Western Civ course um, for Gen Ed, uh, and like I said, it has to be writing intensive. Please look over the course catalog description and um, the course objectives um, when you get a chance. So, like I say, there are a total of seven textbooks for this course. We're going to start right at the beginning of the history of Western philosophy with um, Plato's Five Dialogues. We're only reading two of them, the Apology and the Crito, um, which sort of lay out nicely um, Socrates' moral position and give you an example of the kind of argument that would stem from that moral position. Then we are moving to Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics. As the title suggests, it's an ethics textbook. Um, it's also sort of a part, a child rearing manual, right? Because this is a virtue ethics approach and this has to do with educating proper dispositions from a very young age. It's also sort of the first self-help book ever written as well. Um, Aristotle is going to present you with a bootstraps method and um, it's based on some pretty intense metaphysical philosophy as well. Um, we'll go over that. It's, I think, one of the more important um, uh, contributions to ethics um, that uh, we're going to uh, engage with. Right? It's the big three are virtue ethics, um, deontology, which is um, Kantian, and uh, utilitarianism, which of course is the John Stuart Mill, Mill book, Utilitarianism. Um, then I'm going to present you with a couple of uh, existentialist attempts to, um, to to come up with an ethical theory. Anyhow, uh, books one and two and part of book number three, um, that's, that's as far as we're going in the Nick McKeon Ethics. Um, Kant, I know it looks like a flimsy little book, but it's probably the most difficult book that we're going to read this semester. Um, and uh, we're just going through um, the preface and the first two sections of Kant's Grounding to Metaphysical Morals. Followed um, by Kant's counterpoint, John Stuart Mill, uh, the utilitarian ethicist. You see, Kant says it's uh, it, the, the it's the intention and the nature of the the moral action itself that determines the moral worth of a particular action, whereas uh, Mill is a consequentialist. It's only the outcome of the action that determines the moral worth of the action. And um, a little bit of his political philosophy uh, as well. So I need you to buy both of these. They are as cheaply as possible, so um, that shouldn't be too big a, um, a, a, a bit of strife. Um, and again, we're not reading the whole things of either of these. Um, Nietzsche, um, Frederick Nietzsche, Beyond Good and Evil, which is a critical approach, a critical assessment of uh, morality. Jeez, I've got a baby right on my hand. That's weird. Anyhow, she's okay. I can see her being okay on the video monitor. And then finally, um, Jean-Paul Sartre, Existentialism and Human Emotions, which lays out um, a very interesting treatment of uh, the emotions that should be associated with uh, the act of choosing, which is um, the, the fundamental sort of act that um, sort of grounds ethics. You see, in ethics, we're trying to come up with a method to assess and actually issue prescriptive claims. Right? So if we're doing ethics, we're asking on what basis we can tell someone to, to do this rather than that, on what basis you should do this right? and account at the same time for why frequently people don't. Right, so um, it, this is going to be a theoretical introduction. Um, I'm going to pepper through with a lot of examples, some anecdotal, some personal, some just illustrative, some case studies as well. Um, uh, so uh, it should be relatable, but nonetheless, this is a theory course. Those are your textbooks. Um, I've written um, it, a course description here. Uh, I've got a sort of revise this at some point, but nonetheless, that's the idea of it, right? We're interrogating the idea of how to make an, a, a should claim and uh, what sort of standards we should hold ourselves to with regard to our interactions with other people in the world, right? So by studying ethics, 
by understanding ethics and by practicing ethics, as Aristotle will point out, because the practice of ethics is where you know the actual ethics occurs, right? We're not going to think really hard and automatically become better people, but nonetheless, as uh, to, 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 to sort of paraphrase Aristotle, if we know what the good is, then like archers who have a target to aim at, we're more likely to ourselves hit the mark. Right. So that's what we're going to do in this class. Um, we're going to interact with all of these theorists. I'm going to coax arguments out of you. I'm going to make sure you're following these arguments through assignments. And um, basically, I'm going to grade you in sort of four categories of thing. Um, the first category are section tests. We're going to have three of those, right? We're 20% of your final grade each. That totals to 60. These will be writing intensive. Um, I'm curious how I describe them here. Do -do. Do -do 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 section tests. This course is divided into three uh, sections consisting of two theories each. So the first is Socrates, Aristotle, the second is Kant Mill, and the third is Nietzsche Sartre. Right. Um, each of the tests for this course will test the section that we're working on only. That is, they're not comprehensive. Um, each test will consist of questions totaling 20 possible points, typically five short answer questions um, asking you to define a term, make an important distinction, etc. related to the particular philosopher and one longer answer question. Uh, the questions will be designed to test both uh, reading comprehension, so yes, you got to read the books, um, uh, reading comprehension and a more general understanding of the ideas that we've studied, so that is the readings and all of the video material are completely fair game for these quizzes. If I've posted it for you to view, you should view it because I may test you on it. Um, these tests will be posted to Moodle at the end of each section covered by the quiz. Um, dates indicated below. Um, in fact, I've decided this semester I'm posting on Thursdays and you will have till the following Tuesday to write the test. You'll have at least five days. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, you've got like five and a bit days. Um, your responses should be submitted through Moodle. Um, the due dates for each quiz are indicated on the course syllabus. So um, those are the quizzes. That's the massive amount of your uh, work. The first one comes um, when? October. Let me see. I've got important date section, October 4th, um, and I'm having you submit by noon. But really, since you've got several days, you can plan your day and submit whenever is acceptable. I give you over a weekend uh, for each of these. Um, the second test on Canton Mill is due Tuesday, November 1st, so there's a month lag time. And then the final test comes in with all of your final materials in December on the 9th. Um, by 11.55 p.m. I give you almost till midnight with that one. So um, those are the, uh, the tests. Uh, five short answer questions, generally about a paragraph or two in response, right? And the longer answer uh, questions, well, they're going to be longer, a page, page and a half um, of, of, of writing for that. Generally, with the, uh, the longer answer questions, I ask you to do something more overarching and comparative. Um, it's, I, it, I isolate a problematic that exists between, for example, Nietzsche and Sartre, right? Nietzsche claims this, Sartre claims this, how would you mean through that? And you're making an argument, right? So um, th that is the test. Um, this is an online course, uh, so uh, it's it, the problem with the YouTube videos, it goes one way towards you, right? Um, and you don't get a chance to chirp in and respond and basically cut your teeth on making arguments trying to figure out this theory. So um, over the past several semesters, I've developed um, these uh, discussion forums for the course, which are the participation portion of your grade. They're worth 15% of your final mark. And um, you're expected to engage with each of them. Each of them will isolate a problematic related to a particular theorist. And for example, with Socrates, why would Socrates argue? Or uh, just here is his description of um, his moral position, what are his presuppositions, etc. 
right? Uh, and you guys will use these writing, uh, the, these discussion forums as sort of your rough workspace. Um, so you're expected to post at least minimally once for each of these forums. Uh, more is better. Right. Um, the purpose is to um, create an ongoing conversation with one another regarding this material. So I track both your posts and your responses to other people's posts. Right. So both show up and both are assessed by me. I myself post very infrequently on these forums. Um, so uh, that is uh, what's going on with that. I, I consider that your rough workspace. Um, in addition to that, there's going to be a writing project for this course. It's sort of a short one. I think I said 1,000 to 1,200 words. That's what I usually say. Yep. Yeah. And uh, about midway through the semester, I will open up a proposal forum and give you a series of course overview questions um, that, so that you will be able to um, think ahead and plan your argument, right? Um, it's basically pick one of my questions and two of the theorists that we've studied and um, it, it, it answer a question on the basis of those. I'm sorry, I've got to go check a baby. I will be right back. All right, sorry about that. This is one of the catches with uh, working from home. Um, so where was a uh, writing project? So this is this is um, one of the ways that this course becomes a writing intensive course. So uh, I've got to ask you to write something. Anyhow, um, the writing uh, uh, assignment proposal forum um, is another aspect of your grade. It's worth five percent overall. I mark these pass fail. Um, what I want is not just a sentence or two, but a argument plan from you um, in order to get you thinking about your final writing assignment ahead of time. Um, that way, uh, once the end of the semester hits, you already have a plan in place. Right. So um, pass fail. Um, and uh, this allows you to, oh, I've got a typo. I'll have to fix that. But um, there's a note to fix that, but um, yeah, so uh, do, 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 yeah, so the writing project proposal forum closes um, right at our last day of classes, which is um, boo, 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 December 5th. Um, and then all of your final assignments are due by the 9th, right? Um, so uh, the, the idea is that uh, I've got a lot to grade this semester, so anything I can get an early start on um, before the end of the semester when you submit your materials and 48 hours later I have to submit my grades. I just, it, I'm going to compile everything that I can ahead of time. Um, the discussion forums, on the other hand, are open right up until uh, the 11th hour. Well, the 11th hour and 55 minutes on December 9th, right? So um, conceivably, you see the way I line this up, uh, right up until the final moment of this class, you have access to your last test, 20%. You've got access to all of the forums, 15%. And you've got access to your final writing assignment, 20%. So it's a bottom heavy class, which makes it very possible for you to succeed towards the end of the class as well. You're best to work along throughout the entire semester. But if you get into trouble early, there is still the capacity for you to rescue yourself um, later. So that's the assignments. Um, that's that's how I'm assessing you uh, through this semester. Like I say, um, instructional technology, most of the lectures will come via YouTube. I don't just give you my lectures um, because that's just Grant Yoakum show. And, um, what I do is I supplement my own lectures uh, it, with a series of other video content sort of instructional resources um, that I've compiled over the past number of years um, as well. I refer to these, these, these supplements in my own videos as well, so as to create sort of a dialogue. I sometimes disagree with those videos. That doesn't mean you have to. It just means um, that, uh, you know, it's, I'm trying to create a dialogue around this material. 
it's one of these courses where, uh, well, first off, if I do it right, you'll never know what I think. Uh, and secondly, uh, even if you know what I think or suspect you know what I think, you're best not to just give me what I think. I, I, I want to see you engage in the sort of critical reasoning and argumentative sort of processes that is uh, the, 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 the sort of nucleus of philosophy. Right? Philosophy is a long discussion about the things that really matter, essentially. Right? It's the love of wisdom. And as a practice, right, it involves getting into conversations and debates and disputes with one another in order that we come up with the best argument, the best reasons to support the things that we believe. And so everything is fair game with regard to philosophy. And in fact, in this course, what you'll find is that um, it, it, there's been a lot of discussion about trigger warnings lately. Um, and uh, this entire course should have a trigger warning because philosophy sits in that sort of position where we talk about all of the things that you're not supposed to talk about in polite discussion, religion, politics, value, so loosely money, um, etc. And these theorists are going to take some pretty bombastic positions. I don't need you to agree with them. I'm not trying to persuade you to agree with any of these particular theorists. What I'm trying to get you to do is engage critically with these theorists. And so just because I'm making their argument for them doesn't mean I'm making an argument that I'm trying to get you to believe. I'm just trying to get you to understand the nature of their argument in order that you can be armed to be critical of these kinds of arguments. Because this is an ethics course at the end of the day. These guys are telling you what to do. And you should, to some extent, exercise your own reason, autonomy, agency, in order to engage with this stuff. Because there are going to be people telling you what to do for the rest of your life. It's important that you're able to think for yourself about this sort of thing. And this course is aimed at it developing some of the skills that you'll need to be able to do that. All right. So in the end, this course is a course about how to manage your freedom. So um, that's the assignment. Um, and, well, what do you think? Shall we do the policies? I have some general course policies here, um, and before I even start, um, it, these policies are here because I've had problems in the past. I'm not accusing you of anything because I don't even know you guys yet. I'm sure we'll have a lovely semester with one another, uh, but um, nonetheless, um, these policies are here to sort of solve a problem before it becomes a problem, and the first rather lengthy one has to do with plagiarism. Plagiarism is essentially the academic cardinal sin. And, well, it's, I'll describe this a couple of ways to you. Um, first off, from my perspective, here it is my job to assess whether or not you understand this material. If, in the place of a written assignment, I get a reiteration of Sparknotes or Grade Saver or Wikipedia or something along those lines presented as your own words, as your own thoughts, as your own reasoning, well, I can't do my job because I don't know what you think. I know what Wikipedia, or by the way, I edit. So in some cases, if you're grabbing it off Wikipedia, you're grabbing it off me, and I know that's mine and not yours. Right? Um, I know what Sparknotes thinks. I know what, but I don't know what you think, right? So I have no basis to assess your ability to grapple with this material. And it's important that I be able to do that. Secondly, it's a pretty serious act of theft and misrepresentation. You see academics, you know, basically what we trade on is our thoughts, our ideas, our reasoning, our words. Right? So when somebody grabs our thoughts, our ideas, our reasoning, our words, and fails to attribute those to us, you're stealing essentially, not you, people who do this. Right? I've had over 50 cases go before um, the Dean of Students um, over the past number of years that I've taught at Oakland. 
But um, nonetheless, it's basically you're stealing the thing that I depend on in order to 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 to, to, to do my job, in order to pay my bills. Right? It's 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 what I've got. Um, it's an act of theft. It's an act of misrepresentation, and I've seen professors do it and get fired from their very secure positions for doing it. Um, it we all. We all watched the, uh, the, 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 the reiteration of Michelle Obama's speech, and uh, that was pretty tasteless and I think was rightly called out. Um, I've seen entire books have to be withdrawn from the bookshelves because it was discovered that one of the authors wound up uh, misrepresenting, plagiarizing somebody's PhD dissertation. Right. Um, yeah, no, this is this is a big deal. Right. So I have a policy largely because I've had a lot of problems with plagiarism. Um, so if you don't know what it is right at the bottom, I uh, link you to um, the site right uh, program, which is a, a program through the library and the Academic Writing Center that is sort of an online tutorial that tells you what plagiarism is, how to properly cite, under what conditions you have to cite, etc, etc. So I link that um, to my plagiarism policy via a footnote and um, it's if you don't know what plagiarism is and how to avoid it, I highly recommend I've sat down and I've gone through this program. You should too. Right, because it's actually pretty good. But what's plagiarism? Plagiarizing the work of others. Plagiarism is using someone else's work or ideas without giving that person credit. By doing this, this a student is in effect claiming credit for someone else's thinking. You've taken somebody else's work. Right? Whether the student has read or heard the information used, the student must document the source of the information. When dealing with written sources, a clear distinction should be made between quotations, which reproduce the information from the source word for word with indirect quotation marks, and paraphrases, which digest the source of the information and produce it in the student's own words. Both direct quotations and paraphrases must be documented. Even if the student rephrases, condenses, or select from another person's work, the ideas are still the other person's, and failure to give credit constitutes misrepresentation of the student's actual work and plagiarism of another one's ideas. And importantly, buying a paper or using informa information from, <laughs> I love this part, the World Wide Web or Internet without attribution is uh, and handing it in and as one one's own is plagiarism and that is straight from um, policies and procedures um, in the student handbook and i give you the link there that is your responsibility this is something you're already obligated by i have a zero tolerance policy on plagiarism in this course um, and here's how this works my contract tells me that I am an adequate judge of the quality of your scholarship. But authorship is something I am not contractually allowed to judge. So if I suspect a case of plagiarism, it has to go to the Dean of Students Office. It's just, it's what I'm contractually obligated to do, right? That's just, that's just what has to happen. Right. So um, it basically um, my policy at zero tolerance is that um, what do we do about this? Uh, it, like the Dean of Students Office will come up with a list of sanctions if it's determined to be a case of plagiarism, um, including suspension, um, including sometimes they suspend you for the current semester, right? So let's say you're taking five courses, you get caught plagiarism uh, with a case of plagiarism in an academic misconduct case in this course. They suspend you for the current semester, which means it wipes all of your grades from all five courses that you're taking. Uh, that's pretty bad. Definitely probation, um, a whole host of other possible sanctions, and you could be expel expelled from the school. Right, but um, regardless of whatever uh, the Dean of Students Office um, decides to add as a sanction, my course policy is if you plagiarize and if it goes in front of the Dean of Students Office and it's determined to be a case of plagiarism, 
the sanction I add in is you fail, not the assignment, not the particular question, not the particular, the entire course. You fail the entire course, right? So um, when we get to uh, utilitarianism, which is basically a complicated form of cost-benefit analysis, apply it to this. What do you hope to benefit by plagiarizing one response to one quiz question or an entire quiz that's 20% of the course versus uh, the potential cost, right? which is you fail the course, you just fail it. And in addition, I should warn you, I've got sort of like a wacky sixth sense with determining who's plagiarizing and who's not. And there's a very specific way that academics write that students don't and frankly shouldn't. And so um, it stands out. And it's, so you do it, I'll catch you. And if I catch you, the consequences are dire. So um, you see why I don't like this. It, it, this is my least favorite part of introducing a, to a new course because here I am already wagging my finger at you. You haven't done anything. You're probably perfectly nice people. I don't know you from a hole in the ground. Right. And so far, with regard to this course, you're innocent and I've already had to take on an accusing tone. Right. So that policy is there. You're informed. Um, I enforce it and um, don't do it. We won't have a problem and it makes no difference whatsoever. And I'm sure we won't. All right. Uh, missed assignment policy. I'm the first one to understand life happens. Um, I'm the father of twin girls who are 18 months old and boy, I tell you, life happens. I've got a daughter with some pretty serious health problems. So, um, you, you know, life happens. You, you may get an email from me and say, okay, well, I got to take my daughter in for another surgery, another surgery. It sucks. All right. Um, so, it, you know, it's, I'm going to miss a deadline or something along those lines. You're going to have to wait another couple of days for your, your assignments back. And um, if I expect you to um, comport yourself to that, I should be expected to comport myself to uh, your uh, skies falling kind of events. Life happens. I get it. All right. So if you get sick, if you're pet dies, if you're in a car accident, or if somebody you care about it, contact me and we will work something out if you're going to miss an assignment deadline. And if all of a sudden your computer crashes or you get a wicked flu and can't get out of bed for four days or something along those lines, let me know and I'll work with you. The, the missed assignment policy is only there because I've had problems in the past where people miss the first test and come December, they say, hey, by the way, I got to write that first test. No, I've posted an answer key. It's, it's too late at that point, right? So I put a deadline, right? It's you got to get in touch with me, preferably before the deadline that you're going to miss or within 12 hours. And that should be real possible. And you'll find me real willing to work with you if you work with me, right? But if you let it go a week, two weeks, a month, or something along those lines, it's it's just too late. And I've got, God, I've, I've got nearly 200 students this semester. And um, so you need to work with me in order that I be able to work with you. Likewise, assignment submission, you'll be uploading documents to Moodle. That's, that's the way we do this, right? So you get an assignment, you upload a document to Moodle. It's happened in the past that students thought they uploaded the document to Moodle, but they didn't upload the document to Moodle. And three weeks later, they say, hey, why did I get a zero on that? Because there was no submission to that for that particular assignment. That's the answer. It's your responsibility to make sure your document gets uploaded to Moodle. And keep in mind, too, that it's your responsibility to make sure the right document gets uploaded to Moodle. Right? Because on occasion, I've gone to grade an introduction to ethics assignment and I get a communication studies assignment instead. Well, that doesn't address any of the questions. I, I, I can only grade what's there.
That's the idea. So make sure that your upload was successful. If I don't have it, it's not there. All right. Um, so just make sure that it's your responsibility and that you meet that responsibility. Um, email, like I say, I've got uh, d d d d d closing on 200 students this semester. They all email me. I try to stay on top of things and respond to emails in a timely-ish kind of way. But in some cases, I could spend 24 hours a day emailing students back and still not clear my inbox. Right, So I do fall behind from time to time. Um, the best way to ask me a question is come to my office hours and ask me in person. Right. That way you get an instant, immediate response um, and we're able to have a conversation about it. I mean, think of it this way. The average person talks at about 220 words per minute. A fast typist might type 100. Right. So um, th that's the best way to get in touch with me. Um, also, if you email me a question and 25 other students email me the same question, I may send out a general email to everyone. Right? I'm just trying to be efficient. Right? I'm not ignoring you. I'm trying to, like, because if 25 of my 180 students have this question, 100 of my 180 students have this question, and it's best to just answer everybody. Right? So um, that, that, that happens from time to time. And one more thing about email. I'm not even supposed to respond to a Hotmail or a Gmail or a Yahoo or a, I don't know if I'm using current email or a me.com kind of email. Right? I am only supposed to have student correspondence with students at Oakland University through an Oakland University email account. And that's where I'm going to be emailing you. So activate it, get it going, and um, all course correspondence should go through OU email. Right. Um, discussion forum content policy. Um, keep it classy and keep it on target. Right. Uh, these are instructional resources um, where I'm asking you to enter into debates and, you know, have arguments with one another. And I know the blood boils. Right. So um, first off, any sort of attack against the arguer rather than an argument about a position, I consider that, you know, a breach of the, the the discussion forum content policy, right? Um, so, uh, it, no derogatory comments, no personal attacks on this forum, and posts of that nature will be taken down, and some sort of uh, you know sanction will be imposed, grade penalties, or depending on like if it's a racial slur or something along those lines, it may actually have to go before the dean of students. So keep it super classy. I understand that I'm asking you to get into debates about, at some point, religion, right? At some point, you know, personal conduct, at some points, politics, and the blood boils, right? Because these philosophy, and especially ethics, asks us to engage with our deepest held beliefs and have reasoned arguments about them, right? Control yourself, keep it classy, right? And while we're at it, keep it topical, right? So uh, the discussion forums are not the right place to say, hey, does anybody have notes? Or when are we getting our exams back? Or anything along those lines. The Aristotle Forum is for discussing Aristotle. The Socrates Forum is for discussing Socrates. Right? So keep it classy, keep it topical. That's the idea of the discussion content, uh, forum um, content policy. And um, finally, before you ask, uh, there will be no extra credit assignments offered in this course. Right? Taped to the outside, it, well, no, is the answer there. One, it's something extra for me to grade. Two, I have to offer it to everybody. Three, I don't have time. There's just no time for it. And uh, like I say, it's a bottom heavy course. You've got a lot of control of a lot of your grade right up until the end, mobilize that control. That's that's how you succeed in this course. All right. Um, so I've gone over the assignments. Um, we're almost done here. All right. 
Um, it, the second to last page is a whole series of schedules and important dates um, and my toner cartridge is dead so I've got a white line right down the middle. Um, important dates, uh, they're all here. Section test 1 October 4th by noon. Section test 2 November 1st by noon. Uh, section test 3 December 9th um, by 11.55 p.m. Um, uh, the, the, the topics for the writing assignments will be posted along with the forum midway through the semester. I'd say probably mid to end of October. Um, then you can get cracking on that. Um, the final writing assignment is due December 9th, um, as well as your final section test. And all of the discussion forums close December 9th at five minutes to midnight as well. Those are all of your dates in big, bright, friendly letters right at the top here. Yes, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy reference. Um, schedule. I break it down week by week uh, for you here so that you should know what you're supposed to be viewing on Moodle, what you're supposed to be reading from the textbooks, and what we're supposed to be talking about. So week one is syllabus, course policy, overview, and a general introduction to philosophy. Um, I will post a video uh, with regard to the pre-Socratics. That is just for your reference so that you know where the heck Socrates is coming from. I won't test you on that one. That's why it's not listed here. But nonetheless, um, and it, I think there's another more general what's philosophy for video that I'm going to post as well. Um, these are just sort of background kind of videos. It's, I'm not testing you on them, but nonetheless, they're there for your reference. That's what we're doing the first week. Uh, weeks two and three, um, we're on Socrates. So I break down what you're supposed to be reading from the five dialogues. Um, and I have a whole series of videos for you. Week four and five, we're on Aristotle, tell you what to read, tell you what to watch, um, and then section test one, right? Will be posted to Moodle um, September 29th and uh, due October 4th, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Um, so um, that uh, lays out the entire semester for you. Now, if you have any questions whatsoever uh, about any of these uh, materials or anything that was discussed in any of the videos throughout this course, really send me an email, come by my office hours, come see me, and um, we can have a discussion about it. Um, so please just don't let questions fester. Right, that's the worst. If you sit there wondering, you can just ask me. That's that's what they pay me to do. That's what I'm here for. That's that's why you're taking a course rather than just picking up the books and reading them yourself. Right. So um, that's what we're looking at there. Final page of the syllabus. Um, it, you will be uh, sort of pleased by this, I think. Um, is a grading scheme. Right. Um, take a close look at what the letter grades uh, convert to in terms of a percentage. And then um, this is this is just what I grew up with. This is this is how I was assessed. This is what a letter grade means percentage wise. Um, and really, it's arbitrary. This is just what I think when I say eh, it's about a B. I, I mean, mid 70s. Right. When I say it's a C, I mean mid-60s kind of thing. So you get a mid-60s in terms of percent from me, you know you've got a C. And all the office of the registrar ever sees from me is your GPA grade. So the bottom of the page there, letter grade to point conversion, uh, grade point conversion from Oakland University's office of the registrar. This is what I do. I take your percentage at the end of the course, translate that into a letter grade. Now I know you've got a B plus, which is 77 to 79.9. Well, I go down here and realize B plus. Well, that's a 3.5, you get a 3.5. That's the way it works. Um, the first semester I started teaching in the States and that was a long bloody time ago for University of Michigan. I didn't realize that this letter grade to percentage point conversion wasn't standard in the States. This is standard right across Canada. This is just what it, you know, this is what I grew up with. So I had students in tears approaching me in the parking lot about their grade. And I'm like, what, you don't have a C, you've got a B. What are you talking about? Oh, oh, oh okay. Kind of thing. So this is just to 
avoid you freaking out about your grade needlessly. Right, so it's better that it's all here in black and white. Um, I will say that it's much harder to get into that A range since the A range starts at 80 and goes all the way to 100. So it's accordingly harder to get into the A range, but nonetheless, still possible. I've had a number of A's throughout the year. So um, I look forward to discussing these issues and this material with you throughout the semester, and um, I look forward to having a good time doing so. Thank you and have good days, one for each of you.